Hey, what's up? What's up? I thought we'd uh, check out some stuff, uh, things about compressors, and uh, since I'm in lockdown, and uh, I'm just about out today, but I've been wanting to do this because when I first started out, I didn't understand any of it, right? I've been producing music now since uh, in the 90s. I started, you know, I started on reel to reel was my first thing. It was a sound on sound reel to reel, which was really a pain because you know after about the third or fourth time you get all that tape noise just keeps building up building up after that i went to four track and that was so much fun we had so much fun with four track and uh you know you'd have to bounce down and then you'd have more tracks you bounce down you'd have more tracks and uh and eventually uh of course we went to pro tools i got my first pro tools rig i think in 2004 which was pro tools 6.1 i don't know five Five something five you know you used to have a card you'd have to put the card in the computer and have a scuzzy wire to the uh breakout box and uh so that was so much fun then we went up to 6.3 or 7 or something i can't remember then later up to 8 7 then 8 then 10 and I, I think we're on what 11 or 12 now or something like that but i don't use pro tools too much anymore but but uh there's another video that i'm going to do coming up about some of the plugins that came with that that I still would like to use and still am using. But anyway, let's go on to what we're talking about. We wanted to cover some basic things about compressors, the main compressors, how they're used, why they're used that way, and who uses them, and our alternatives, right? Uh, so, of course, we can't go out and purchase the hardware because some of those things are like 50 grand, 60 grand. You buy all those compressors, you're going to have $300,000, 400000 dollars wrapped up in compressors and uh, who wants to do that when you can buy it online i remember uh when i first checked out waves platinum or whatever it was it was like ten thousand dollars and it was a uh, 2004 2005 for the package it was like ten thousand dollars you know you can still you can get that package today for hundreds even less than that for some of it and uh, matter of fact, I think they always have some offers going on for like 25 bucks, $29, unheard of. I couldn't believe it when I first seen that stuff because it was just so mind-blowing to me that it was so cheap after being thousands of dollars for it. But anyway, <laughs> I, I digress, as they say. Um, uh, I'm almost out of uh, quarantine, so I thought I'd take this opportunity to talk to you a little bit about some compressors. To understand compressors, you really have to understand the uh, wave envelope, the sound envelope. And so we're going to look at that real quick. Let me switch over. So we're going to start out right here. I'm inside of Logic. And this, you know, I brought up Massive because Massive uh, has a good, uh, good, good thing. See, this thing right here is called the sound envelope. And you're talking about how fast the sound, that's the attack right here. So if, we're, if I get a mouse right here, you see this? Now imagine for a second that right here is when you hit your key on your or make a sound with your voice or hit your guitar or whatever. We'll just use piano, hit your key on your piano. This is how fast you hear it. It's called the attack. And you can make it long or you can make it short, right? So right here, if you hit it, I'd hit it all the way. You'd hear it right when I hit it. Dong, dong, dong. And if I hear it here, whoops. If I hit it here on the attack, then you'd go, dong, dong, get it? So that's the attack. And then the level is how loud it goes right at the top, right after it hits. Okay, decay is how fast that this part, whoops, you can't see that really, how fast this part goes down. So that's the decay. And you got a decay level, which you normally don't have. So that's the same idea, right? I, and then this, then the uh, morph is stuff that we won't even talk about. But over here is release. See this release? So you have attack, right? Decay, level, and release. Right? That's how fast it stops. So right here, if I went like this, if I went like that, when I hit my piano, it'd go dong, dong, dong. If I went like this, 
it'd go dong, dong. All right, get it? Okay, so to understand these things, you have to understand these things to understand how a compressor works, really. Because in a compressor, you have the tack, how fast the compressor engages on the sound. And then you have uh, the level or the, the makeup gain on, on many of them. You'll have a, a gain makeup, right? And that's the level. Okay. You have the decay or the release over here. All right. So I brought this up just to try to teach you a little bit about this. All, all right. Looking at this real quick before we go any further. So we looked at what we look at so far, attack and release. And this is basically level. Okay. And so you can switch this from meter to graph. But I have a meter. So if I was doing this threshold, if I was Chris Lord Algae, uh, it would be bouncing like that. If uh, some of the other people, they bounce around here. I usually bounce around here. It depends what you're doing with it and how how much di how many how many dynamics are in the piece of music that you're adjusting. The ratio. Let's use the graph to show you that, so you can see how it, the, the sound comes in. And if it's like that, it'll never go over 30, 20 b, right? So it's just gonna clip it. That's almost the limiter right there. And that's basically what that does. You can see. You can see the slope of how it how it reduces and compresses the sound. The makeup includes includes increases the volume. Here's the knee. You notice there's a hard knee and a soft knee. Hard knee, soft knee. That means the curve there. This is not a very good uh, thing to show you there. The hard knee and the soft knee. Over here you have a limiter if you want it, and you can set the the uh, threshold for your limiter. And then you can add to some distortion if you want it. And here, this is a mix, right? How much of your input versus your output do you want, right? So that that's something that's not normally on most compressors. Those are only on plugins, pretty much. This mix knob, uh, and then you can adjust your outputs here. All right. If you're imagining a a, a sound wave right here. Let's see if I can bring up a sound wave for a second. Okay, so I'll zoom this in right here. Here's the tack and here's the decay. This is called the transient right here, especially when it comes up here. See this wave? It's the transient. It's when you hit, it's the sound wave when you hit the, make a sound with your voice or anything. All natural sound is in a sine wave. So it's gonna be looking like that. You know, unnatural sound, like from a synth, you can have a triangle wave, square wave, whatever. But natural sounds all in a sine wave. But uh, so here you go. See this? And and a lot of times, let me just say this a lot of times when we're editing and you get clips and pops when you when you edit, it's because you didn't cut on the transient where the transient, where the sound wave meets the line right here. It goes from positive to negative. If you can clip right there somewhere, you won't get the clicks and pops on your edits little point but right here now if we're talking about the tack it's how fast that the compressor engages over the top of this what does a compressor do well I, I don't really want to teach a lot about what compressors do because it'll side sidetrack us but a compressor basically compresses the sound it lifts up the bass the quietest sounds and clips the loudest sounds it squeezes it together compresses it that's why it's called a compressor now, uh, here, how fast it attacks is the attack. How long it lasts is the release and then the gain. All right. So this is the sound wave. This is transient, right? Here's sound waves. Let's see if we can find some other. See this sound wave right here? See that sound wave right there? See, that's like a, this looks like a, a drum hit. Pop, 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 right? And here you got the transient. In, well, that is this is labeled as transient, but it means this. This. This is the transient. This is the transient, right? This, the distance in between here is not the transient. This is the transient. This is the transient. That's the transient. Why is that important? Okay, it's important because if you have a fast attack on your compressor, 
then it'll defeat your transient. So that means that if you want a drum, right, and you go pop, 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 and the compressor isn't adjusted right, you're going to lose the sound of the drum. On the other hand, if you have a vocal, right, uh, and you have a, a that a, adjusted properly, a longer trend, a longer attack, then it's going to smooth out the vocals. Okay, so all that to tell to try to get you to understand what what this is. Okay, so here's how we we are engaging and going over. All right, so a compressor. Now we understand how a compressor functions. Now. The, that's the basic the basic basic that you need to know about a compressor but above and beyond that let's think about compressors for a second now there's several different kinds of compressors and let me bring those up for a second the first and probably the most famous compressors of all time are the 1176s okay so here's here's the three most famous compressors probably that in history okay and and here we have the blue stripe that's 1176 blue stripe and then we have the gray or the black face and six. these are all three 1176 compressors it's just a rating they can just call them 1176 I'm really not sure what the 1176 stands for but I'm sure there is a meaning this one here is called the 2a now there's also a 3a but that's in a different category. Now, these compressors right here are uh, uh, very famous. Okay, so we have the 1176s, the three of them, and the 2A. The next, the next probably the most important ones you gotta learn about are the SSLs. The SSL got famous on a board, right? It was on the board. A lot of places have SSL mixing boards and the SSL uh, compressor is right on the board okay we'll talk about the differences in a little bit I'm just introducing you to them now now the solid state SSL you can get them nowadays there here's the 400 and here's the waves version of it right so you can you can just simply buy those other than that here's the 3a it has a special use we'll talk about that in a bit this is the Abbey Road. It's very famous. That's, you know, for like the Beatles. Okay, so let's start with the SSLs. All right. The 400 bus compressor is a VCA compressor. That means voltage controlled, I believe. Yeah, voltage control, voltage controlled amplifier. That means that, that the more, the more sound comes in, the more it reacts. Right. The more you understand that when the when your audio gets converted to electrical, then it's a voltage. And so as the voltage goes up and down, the compressor reacts. All right. So that's the SSL compressor. Uh, its main use, its main use is as a mix bus compressor or a mastering compressor or main bus compressor, mostly main bus mix bus compressor. That's what you're going to find for the SSL. This is the SSA L4000G. Uh, they call it the glue, right? The glue. It's the glue. It glues the whole song together, and that's what it's for. So Logic, which there is one in Logic. It's the uh, VCA. Logic. Platinum Digital. Looking at Logic's real quick. Let's look at Logic's compressor. This is what's unique about Logic compressors, is they, tr they have a, a wide variety of all the most famous and they modeled them pretty good, not too bad. You could get away with them, a lot of people do. And uh, especially the compression, you know, the Platinum Digital, here's the thing about the Platinum Digital, it's not very good as a vocal or instrument compressor, but it is wonderful as a sidechain compressor. That's later when you try to figure out what sidechain compressing is, uh, know that the digital, Platinum Digital compressor is a great sidechain compressor. Another VCA compressor is the API 2500. Uh, let's see if we can look at that real quick. I think I have a picture of it. API 2500. <laughs> there you go. The API 2500 is another VCA compressor. Oh, boy, this is the whole 
obviously this is the, all of their compressors but by API but here we go so API the API compressor SSLG compressor uh, these are all VCA voltage regulated control voltage control and and uh, the voltage control like I said is famous for mastering what's it famous for famous for mastering and famous for being a mix bus compressor so this is where you want to you don't want to use this on, a, on your channel you you can use it on a sub bus or on the main bus but you don't really want to use it uh, that's why the Sheps compressor chain a uh, mastering chain or or a Chris Lord algae mastering chain uh, most of them are using SSL compressors uh, on their mastering bus right okay on their main mix bus out what is a mix bus out oh my gosh okay so pro tools um, let's look at the mix window and right now it's not showing the mains if we showed the mains okay so here we got two audio tracks two tracks and a master okay two tracks and a master so if we look at the mix bus here we have the channel bus and the mix bus now you can have sub and the idea is that you go from the channel into a sub group and into the mix master main so I would where would you put an SSL compressor well you'd put it up here in, the, in this right this is where you'd put the SSL you'd put it in your main mix out or in a subgroup okay so that's where you'd put an SSL compressor out um, they can be used on ind individual channels they offer control and flexibility of course uh, they can be very often modeled after other compressors because they're especially if they're software based uh, usually is favored for the mix for a mixed bus application like we said the types of VACA compressors might include things like uh, Vertigo VSC2 Smart Research C2 Smart Research C1 LA SLG series which is probably the most famous the API 2500 that's probably the next most famous Shadow Hills Dirt du uh, Dual Van der Graaff and I could show you those if you like but and then there's a Shadow Hills mastering compressor now that's probably the most famous mastering compressor out there if you're just into nothing but mastering but unfortunately you're gonna be spending 40 grand for that maybe dramatic obsidian 500 dangerous compressors DBX the DBX 165 right so those are some of the ones that are out there that are the hardware so here's the v classic VCA right here uh, that is the 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 uh, one that is for your channel right here's the one for the channel you don't really want to use this in other areas really but you can but it's it's mainly created for a channel mix some of the uh i don't really want to i'm just going to name these off because because this is going to take too long to bring up pictures of everything so replacements for this the emulators that are out there that you can buy universal audio ssl 4000 g now, right so their plugins are probably the best when it comes to this because they really made sure that their plugin matched their equipment the best they could but uh they're not that cheap other ones might be the wave api 2500 Brainworks Vertigo VSC2 uh, Native Instruments VC160. Now that's worth getting. I have the Native Instruments. If you have Native Instruments complete, you probably have a copy of it. And I didn't use it much, but I'm going to start because they're. I've been doing research, and I guess the Native Instruments compressors are closest, closer than most to the actual hardware. And so uh, you got Altera which you're going to pay some money for that one. Uh, Slate is another name. Elisa, uh, Steinberg, Empirical, Brainwork, Shadow, Shadow Hills, Mastering Compressor. And uh, so those are the ones. And, and like we said, um, 
this is a VCA compressor also. Very famous. It is the Fosrite Red. It's really good for parallel compression. Has a fast attack. It's good as a mix bus compressor. It's good as a master compressor. Right? These are all... Anything that says VCA. Right? They're all voltage controlled. They're... they're uh, designed after different different models this is after the red classic vc no this is the dbx 160 that means that this one here is the ssl for 4000 so here we go this is the focus right red which is a very famous compressor right it's used for parallel like i said it's got fast attack mix best then the classic vc vca this one here is uh the dbx 165a is a DBX 165A excels on drums. Okay, so this is a drum. It's very fast. It's for drums, and can be on individual channels. Uh, you notice this one has auto attack and auto release. There's no no uh, dials for your release and attack on this one. And then your vintage right here, which is the SSL G bus. So right here you have it. Now if I was to bring up for my mastering chain let's uh i could go into native instruments here's the 160 here's the 2a here's the 76 here's the variant comp which is basically the the moo which we'll get into and and so those are right there vca compressor vca compressor vca compressor that's what vc stands for okay and the waves also they have Let's look. Here's Shep's Omni Channel. Shep 73. Shep's 73 Stereo. Let's look at the Omni Channel for a second. See, here's your Omni Channel, and this is going to be a VCA in here. Right? SSL. Right? Your Here's your, your compressor right here. Pre gate. And this is pretty cheap. I, you know, it's a Waves plugin. And uh, so, but this is going to be an SSL compressor inside of here. It's designed to be on your. On your master out all right so what is the ssl used for mostly now the the ones with the slower attacks and stuff like the like the uh like the the foes right red with the faster attack mix bus master bus right the classic right here which one's what's this used for it's like the dbx 165r and it's best on drums this one here, the vintage, is basically the SSL, and that's also for a master. So you got two for that for the master, really. Your choice. And one's the the red, and the other one is the SSL G. So <clears throat> as we're going on, I'm using this stuff here. If you go inside of like live, let's see if I can get it to come up. Uh I mean, you can go down here. Oh, it's up here. See, you you look here, and they have a different different ways, right? They have classical compression, brute compression, brick wall compressor, acoustic, generic compressor. Um, the thing I don't like about this is that it really doesn't tell you who they're emulating, right? So, let's look at. Uh, Reason. Reason has just the two compressors and they, they don't really have anything, right? They have M class and they have Comp 01, which, you know, they don't tell you much about if they're emulating anything. Let's look at uh, FL Studios real quick. This is a little bit better, I think, because it has presets. See the presets? And this is pretty straightforward, right? So if we're looking at it, we want an SSL. Uh, type compressor let's see what we'd look at opta op we know it's not optic so probably a leveler one or two a light uh or vintage you know that would be the wet best for those ones what would be the next ones let's look at uh the the la 1176 okay so we looked at the vca compressors right that include the focus right red 
the DBX 165A, the SSLG, and we also looked at the emulators of those. Now all those were used for a lot of them for a uh, mix, mix bus. I mean, not mix bus, but sub bus, main bus and drums. Okay. Those were the uses of those. And you understand what the uses are and then you can create a better sounding product. I'm sorry it's taking so long. The 1176. The 11, let's, let's look at the 1176 real quick. Okay, 1176 will be this one, this one, and this one. All right, 1176. Now the 1176 uh, was made by the, the owner of, of uh, UA. And uh, there have been only four basic versions of the 1176 throughout time, really. And the original is the blue stripe, A, A, B, and B. That's this one, has the blue stripe. And then the black face, and it has versions C, D, and E, although this one, we're only just showing you one here. And then it has the uh, higher output black face, which is this one, right? Uh, the 1176 has plenty of noise and distortion inside of it, so it, it, it colors your music, right? When you use this 1176, it, it adds something, right? So it's not clean. It's not a clean compressor. It, it adds something. It adds either noise, a little bit of noise on the floor, and it adds some warmth and uh, that sort of stuff. And it takes you back uh, to versions of 80s, 90s, whatever, you know. They did uh, change the op amp in it, and they tried to make it a little cleaner. I think the, the uh, black face is supposed to be cleaner. Now, understand, the black face is a very fast compressor. It's very fast. Matter of fact, most people that use it turn down the the uh, attack on it. They turn it down because it's so fast, or turn it up or whatever. It's because it's so fast that it, it's just way too fast, and for a lot of things. Not for drums though. Drums it can it be used, but if you're trying to use it for anything else, vocals or instruments, way too fast. The blue stripe is a go-to for vocals, along with the two A. They they're the blue stripe is a little bit faster. The 2A is a little bit slower. The black is way fast. Okay, so that's the difference between them. And so, so what are some of the emulators that you can buy? Universal Audio 1176 Waves has the CLA version. You can get the get the get the version. And uh, let's see, um, 76 right here. Here's the 76. Now. The Waves version, you can, you're supposed to be able to punch it blue or black. Uh, yeah, here, see right here, bluey, blacky, bluey, blacky. You can switch it back and forth, so you really get two and one when you buy this thing. And uh, uh, Chris Lord Algae, he's he uses the CLA 76 on the bluey on almost all of his, on a lot of his vocals. And the blacky, he uses on drums. And uh, so we look at those ones, which, which, uh, so that's, that's some of them. Some of the other ones, I, IK Multimedia, Black 76, Slate makes one. Alteria makes a 70, uh, 1176. Uh, Pulsar Audio makes a 1176. Soft Tube makes a good one. Again, Native Instruments VC76 is said to be some of the best and the closest. Uh, Native Instruments, VCA, VC76 Stereo, right here. This is supposed to be closest to the hardware that they can get. But, you know, I'm sure that if you put these two side by side, you're not going to notice much difference. Here you have settings here. That's pretty cool. Presets. Uh, in out, I don't see something here. Let me see if there's a. This is a black face. Obviously, is there a way to get to the the blue face? I don't know. Let's see. I'm not seeing the blue here anywhere. So the only way you're gonna get bluey, I guess, is through waves. <laughs> and it's a go-to compressor, so you're gonna need it. The 1176 black 
has a fast attack and slow release. Drums, guitars, etc. Fast attack, slow release. It's for drums and guitars and instruments, not keyboards. Uh, the here we got studio. This is the black inside of Logic. This is the 1176 black emulator. Okay, so this one's for drums, guitars, anything that's attack, attacking pretty fast. This is the one for it. This one is going to be the blue. Even though it doesn't say it, this one is the blue. Their closest one to the blue. However, I don't know if it, how close it is compared to bluey right here with waves. So that's the 1176 series. The next uh, one that we should cover is the 2A. The 2A is your is an optical compressor, right? It uses light optics, and that's what this is, vintage optical, right here. Okay, so uh, the Teletronics LA-2A leveling amplifier, mostly for vocals. This is mostly for vocals, okay? The idea is that it's just right so the transient of a vocal can get through, right? So that's the idea of them. This is the Native Instruments version of it. It doesn't have a lot. Let's look at the Waves version of it. CL2A stereo. Here's the Waves version of it. So here we got three versions of, of the 2A. Why is it so important at the optical? This is for vocals. That's why it's so important. Right, this goes on the mix bus on the channel for vocals, not on the not on the main mix on the on the uh, vocal channel. And so, when you're running, here's the thing: when you're running these together, you can run the bluey, right. and then in parallel or even in series, uh, run the two A compressor and double up, and you're doing two different things. You're going to get the two A is very clean. It doesn't add a lot of warmth, but the but the bluey does, right? So you sort of mess around with it and get it right. Other other some of the other plugins that you might be able to use are the Teletronics LA2A, PSP Mixo Processor, Brainworks has one, and then we got the Native Instruments up there. IK Multimedia has one, right? The the Vintage Opto, of course, is what's in here. And we we showed inside of uh, what was it uh, inside here? This one has presets, right? Opto Opto Master Opto V. These are these are Optos, right? These are gonna be trying to do what the two A does, right? The Van Moo. These are variable. Uh, very Moo. These are variable uh, tube compressors, which we'll cover in a little bit. Those are like. Some of the other compressors to talk about for a second are are like uh, worth mentioning is the Millennia TCL2, right? It's a dual dual channel optical compressor, so it's the same thing, but it's a dual channel, so it helps you to, I mean, layer and run things in series. It's pretty cool. I don't know if there's a plugin for it though. Uh, another one might be, well, let's just cover diode diode compressors now we've covered all these right so now we're we're, we're going out there from here on out logic doesn't have anything to cover it all right and uh and if you're looking at pro tools pro tools really doesn't have any emulator it has that maximus which is okay and then it has a regular those are those are maximus is sort of like our base or or uh uh, some of the Renaissance compressors, right? It, it sort of clips and lifts and and colors. But the regular Pro Tools stock compressor is just a clean one, just like any other clean one. It doesn't really color it. You can force it to color it somehow, but it's not going to do it. So is the, the, the Ableton Live compressor. It doesn't really color. It's just clean. If you're trying to go after a certain sound and your sound is your favorite musician has that sound, what you need to do is you need to look at 
who is mixing him, right? Who's mixing that person? Who who's the normal person that's mixing that that song? And then my your best bet is just to go online and see what kind, what they're using. You know, most of the time, I mean, the most famous people online put what they got in there. Some of the other ones, like I said, the diode bridge uh, compressor is the is the warmest and most additive of color. Matter of fact, many people think too much. So, so a lot of people don't even use it. Um, therefore, yeah. choosing it as a master bus compressor never happens, right? It, it just doesn't happen. The, the Nave 2254 is a good example of that, especially if you uh, mount them in a stereo rack. Uh, it's great for thickening up the sound. The Nave, I, I think I might have a, let's see if I have that here somewhere. All right, so. All right, so here's the Nave. This is what it looks like. Now you can get plugins that are similar. Uh, Abbey Road is another one that is, you know, really adds a lot of warmth to the, to the music, the Nave 2254. The plugin emulation of the vintage Nave 2254E, a diode bridge design, which is valued for its creamy warmth, warmth and roundness. Great fun on drums, but suitable for anything at all. Right? That's what the, the little thing says here. Uh, okay, so now it's time to talk about tube compressors. And tube compressors are amongst the the royalty, right? The royalty of compressors. Just like uh, tube amps and tube screamers and, you know, overdriving a tube has always been the best way to get warm sound when you're mixing or when you're playing. So the Fairchild is the first one that you think about. There's another version of a tube is the very move the the variable move the delta move they're all tube compressors uh they're slow to attack they're considered to be glue they're they they're warm and they have warm tones they're used mostly for vocals uh the 670 or the 660 and the 670 fairchilds as you've seen uh earlier they're similar to this the, these ones are similar to that um, except for the moves are probably more versatile. You can see there's a lot more to it. You can do a lot more with it. And so they are expensive, but they're great. Um, some of the plugins that you can use to emulate the move. Well, you're not going to find a uh, very comp, you know, in the logic stock compressors. As a matter of fact, you're not going to find a very comp in any of the stock compressors on any of the DAWs, right? You're going to have to get a plug-in for this one. But this is a, a, a really nice compressor. All right, here's some of the compressor names that you can think about getting. Uh, Kerug, True Iron, Pulsar, Moo, Audified, U73B. That's very famous right there, the compressor V2. Kush Audio AR1, Royal Compressors. Uh, native instruments, very comp. Now, if you're like me and you have native instruments, right here, you got the very comp right here. There it is. Boom. Got it. Where was I? Waves Abbey Road Collection. Abbey Road Mastering, Abbey Road Live, Abbey Road Bridge. Uh, let's look at the Abbey Road Mastering Collection. In here, this is not going to be SSL, right? This is going to be an emulation of the tube compressors of a very tube, right? So Abbey Road, as you know, that's the that's the sound of beat of the Beatles and so many others that recorded over on Abbey Road in in uh, Europe. What are some of the other ones? Bomb Factory, Fairchild, six. Yeah, they actually have a one uh, Waves Abbey Road RS one twenty four. Here's the emulation of the Fairchild. Right here, one of the emulation is the Puig Tech. It's the EQP1A. They also, uh, Puig Tech also makes something else, uh, the MEQ5. They have the MEQ5 and the one. What are we using it for? What are we using uh, Fairchilds and Puig Tech and, and uh, what are we using the, the uh, uh, 670 and the 680 for? What are we using the very move and the delta move for? Well, 
We're using it mostly for vocals. Although the actual 660 was a mono unit, but you know, most, a lot of people record, I still do record all my vocals in mono. Um, these are three of the biggest ones, right? The Fairchild, the Puig Tech, the Very Comp, uh, Delta Comp. These, if you can <coughs> get a handle on how to use these properly with vocals, it makes such a difference. And also to create a glue inside your mix. Although most of the time the glue is gonna be an SSL. Let's recap on what we use some of these things for, okay? So um, the use is the Vintage, <coughs> uh, the, the VCA G SSL is a bus compressor, right? That means it's designed to go in the master bus and the sub bus as your glue, as, as an overall, right? It's after things are mixed down and you're trying to create glue for the whole thing to come together, okay? So that's what it's used for. And uh, so that's that's what that's used for. Um, the 1176 Blue is lead vocals. 1176 Blue is lead vocals. The 2A is lead vocals, mostly backup vocals. Um, that's how most most mix masters use them. There are, you know, many anyway in my research. The 1176 Black is drums. Uh, it can be used on vocals in parallel. The 3A, the LA 3A that we looked at, that that one's for guitars and such, acoustic instruments. The LA 3A, acoustic instruments. Okay. So like like we said, the uh, Studio Fet, right there. Studio Fet is the black, 1176 black. Vintage Fet. That's 1176 blue, blue stripe. The classic classic VCA. Classic VCA is the DBX uh, 160. I think it is. I can't remember the name number off it. DBX. It's a drum compressor, right? The blue compressor's vocal compressor. This is a drum comp compressor. The um, Teletronics 2A is the vintage Opto. Right, works really good for serial compression and it works really good for uh, vocals. Let's look at how some of the most famous people use some of this stuff. See with the masters or whatever, Waves has some good videos. There's lots of good videos over there. Chris Lord Algae, uh, CLA in other words, you know, he's very famous, Los Angeles uh, studios. And he has done, I don't know, I lost how many people he's mixed, you know, through the years, uh, but this is what he does. He puts uh, the, the CLA 76 blue, the blue stripe on vocals. Now something interesting that he does, he clips it, makes it bounce all the way to 10, right? I, I have never seen anybody do that by him. He, he clips it. Most people want it to bounce at five or less, but he, he makes it bounce, the needle bounce all the way to 10 uh, on, on some of his stuff. And I thought that was interesting. The CLA 2A, he uses, Chris Lord Algae uses on backup vocals. Right, he also makes that go through. Uh, the 76, 1176 black, he runs a parallel series sometimes on backup vocals and on vocals. The along with the Uria Uri, uh, 176, which we didn't cover. All right, so the LA 3A's guitars and he uses it for just like we said, guitars and acoustic instruments. And then the black is uh, on drums. The 1176 is he uses on drums. The Studio VCA Focusrite Red hardware compressor. Uh, he uses that as a mix down compressor. If we're looking at this, let's just, this this one we use for what? We're using this one for side chaining. Studio VCA, what are we using this one for? We're using this one for mix downs and vocal mix downs. Studio Fet. What are we using this for? This is the 1176 Black. Right? We're using this for drums. Classic VCA. The Classic VCA is the DBX compressors. It's also a drum compressor. So Blackface, drum compressor. Okay, the Vintage VCA. This is the SSLG. Right? So here's Classic. That's drums. 
Vintage VCA is the SSLG, right? So that is going to be a mix bus, right? A glue compressor. It's going to be either sub bus or mix bus. The Vintage FET, this is the bluey. This is the bluey, okay? So this is for vocals. And this you could run tandem with this one, which is the 2A for vocals. Okay, so we talked about the CLA, how he used it in different things, right? Uh, how he uses the mix bus, he uses the Opto 2A for vocals and guitar and stuff. The Junkie XL, the producer, he uses API Studios compressors and EQs mostly. Um, he uses the 550B EQ and the 560 EQ, the, the API 2500. And then uh, the J37 tape compressor he uses for glue, which it's a tape compressor, so. Tony Maserati, you know, he's he's produced so much pop. There's so many, there's so many things that he's done. This is how he uses it. He uses the 2A for vocals. He uses the he uses the SSL for for mix bus. He uses the whoop, here's the SSL. Uh, he uses the 1176 Bluey for vocals. He uses the Verimu or the or the tube or the Abbey Road for vocals and mix bus to warm up things. Let's talk just real quick about Joseph, Jack Joseph Puig. All right, so Jack Joseph Puig, um, the J, JJP Waves plugins, right? I, I brought, I have one up, I think, don't I? Yeah, the Puig right here. He also has his signature series. So does, matter of fact, I think I have some of the signature series stuff. Yeah, see, these are all signature series. Bass, drums, Echosphere. So this is going to be a signature. Let's see. Uh, guitars, Mix Hub, Unplugged, Vocals. Let's look at... This is Chris Lord Algae signature series. Right? And what he did was he put the compressors that he liked. And he mixed it so that when you brought it up just like this, it should be mixed almost like he would have it. Pueg, uh, he also has one. Uh, Eddie Kramer... Yeah, I have some of that stuff. You know, he done the Stones, the Zeppelin, he at Olympic Studios and stuff. Uh, you can buy his signature stuff as well, Eddie Kramer plugins, and you can buy, like I said, Chris Lord Algae. You can buy the Crit Pu uh, Pueg, um, Manny Mariquin. You can buy some of his stuff. Tony Maserati. You could buy his signature stuff. Uh, Gary Brown. You know, that's Pish, Cindy Lopper, the Stones. You can buy. He, he used C4 a lot and 3 verb in his stuff. Uh, Snoop Dogg, Dave Aaron. You can use, uh, he uses mostly CLA 1176 a lot. And the C4 and the 3 verb. Scott Jacoby, uh, who done Coldplay and John Legend and those people, he uses a crush channel. You know, <clears throat> that's pretty interesting. He crushes his stuff and then mixes it back he does a multi like he'll have a he'll have his channel he'll split it in two channels he'll crush one and bring out the the transients in the other and then merge them it's an interesting way to to mix so what did we cover in this video we covered how this works according to well thanks for joining me for this overview of compressors and what they're used for uh, so just to recap what we what we have we had we had the LA2A which is a vocal compression it's optical we have the 1176 blacky and bluey and the other super black which are all FET compressors right very quick blacky and the other black is basically a drum compressor and the bluey is for like vocals especially if you're running parallel compressions uh, so those are those. What else did we have? We had the we had the um, VCA compressors, which are include the SSLG compressor, which is a, a bus compressor. It's basically for the master chain or or the master out or a sub bus out creating glue, creating glue, right? You had the diode type compressors, which are really dirty. Most people don't like to use them too much. You had tube compressors which uh are really famous they're like the rolls royce of compressors and and you have uh several different kinds you have the fairchild you had the Puig, you had uh abbey road and and those compressors and and uh they they really add a lot of warmth 
and you can use them on on just about anything that you like vocals instruments they're slower not as fast as their tubes so they're not going to be fast like a FET uh, but so they're going to be slower a little bit and they're going to bring a lot of warmth and everything and you can use them uh, just about anywhere but most people use them on use them on vocals and uh, but <clears throat> as all things especially compressors you are the mix master right so you make the tools do what you want don't let me say this don't be like me right as you've seen i have pro tools i have logic i have uh fl studios i have reason you know i, I have i also have a uh, one by sony i forget the name i used to have acid i i you know all these different programs and uh, i didn't even get into that one that but anyway pick one pick one and if i were you I'd probably choose Logic now. I enjoy, uh, I create most of my music in live, then finish it in Logic. I rarely ever use Pro Tools anymore at all. You know, because when it comes right down to it, the uh, sound quality, although used to be superior, nowadays it's about equal, so. And uh, Logic has tons of stuff. There's other stuff too. Cubase is very good. You know, Cubase invented the VST. The virtual instrument they invented it so they tend to work well cubase works well with vsts and um all right i hope you enjoyed this show me a, bring put a like down there and uh ring the bell follow me whatever thanks for visiting we'll see you later bye bye